once again, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, my apologies for kicking this off just a little bit late. Uh, I believe the technical term is Zoom kerfuffle. Uh, so thank you for being so patient. Um, allow me to start by saying that I, I know I speak for everyone at Gradle, certainly speak for myself. You're all busy individuals. Uh, I'm sure there's a dozen different things you could have been doing right now, a dozen different things you probably should be doing right now, but you are here with us and we appreciate it. I promise to keep this short and sweet. I know we have booked an hour on your calendar. I will try and wrap up uh, in about 40 minutes, which leads me to two different points. The first one is we have plenty of buffer. If you have questions, concerns, and doesn't have to be about the topic at hand, uh, it could be um, uh, it could be uh, about Gradle Enterprise. It could be about uh, CI, CD. It could be testing. It could be anything. Please use the Q&A. Use the group chat. Let me know. And if I can't address it right now, or if I don't have a good answer for you, then I will try and find you an answer as soon as I can. Right. So once again, thank you for coming in. Um, one quick logistical note. Um, I like to share uh, this document with everyone in the room. Um, there is some information um, that might be pertinent to many of you. Um, it does give you a couple of things. It gives you my contact info in case you need it. Email address, Twitter handle, LinkedIn profile are all listed. Um, this session is being recorded. So you will get a link in about 24 hours once Zoom does its magic. And what I've done is at the bottom, I have listed a couple of resources. Um, so if you want the slide deck, please reach out. I'll send you the slide deck. If you're like, ah, I've seen enough of the slide deck, but I would like a link to the resources. They're right in the document at the very bottom. So you have the resources that I list at the end of the slide deck. Now, every time I write a session, I do a training, I have to make some assumptions about you. If you are, uh, if, if you don't fit this, this demographic, please let me know and I'll adjust the conversation accordingly. My assumption here is you are a developer. You uh, uh, are looking to improve your productivity that often get stifled, um, held hostage by flaky tests. Um, you want to avoid the rabbit holes you may have gone down in your past experiences where an unexpected test failure uh, wasn't, uh, it wasn't obvious that it was a, a, a flaky test and you spent a considerable amount of time, effort trying to debug it. Um, you are potentially a QA engineer uh, an automation, uh, QA automation engineer. You are uh, a CI uh, build team engineer or a DevOps engineer. And your overarching narrative is to uh, perhaps monitor the health of builds of a particular team, maybe whole set of teams and uh, provide uh, some kind of uh, mechanism so that teams know when there is a potential problem with their tests, right? So this is my, um, so, well, so I already got one great comment and I will say this, I should have said this earlier. If you drop me a private chat in Zoom, um, I will not reveal who asked the question and that way you, no one has to know you asked the question, but you still get your questions answered. Right. So I got a great comment from uh, one of the attendees in the group chat. Uh, they are a technical product manager wanting to understand the benefits. And I will definitely, uh, hopefully, my demonstration will give you the answers you're looking for. And I will try and in the future accommodate more of that if I can. But I've got you covered today. Let me know if I don't uh, address enough of what you would like to know. 
All right. So, like I said in this session, let's talk about how we can avoid wasting your time, your colleagues' time, your team's time, wasting CI resources, um, reducing confidence in your tool chain, and to me, the big one, poisoning your culture uh, because of flaky tests. Um, we'll see a couple of different facets of flaky tests. We'll talk about how to go about detecting flaky tests. Uh, we'll discuss some of the common causes that we have seen. And then we'll talk about um, uh, um, strategies and workflows when you are dealing with flaky tests. But the thing I really want to highlight here is I want to show you the tools that we have developed here at Gradle Enterprise. Uh, that help you detect, prioritize uh, flaky tests uh, in your test suite and potentially fix them once and for all. If you will give me very a few minutes to introduce myself, my name is Raju. I play the role of developer advocate uh, and trainer at Gradle. Uh, if you are in the United States, I'm based out of Columbus, Ohio. So if you are in the neighborhood uh, or if you're flying through Columbus, ping me and I'll pick you up at the airport and buy you a beverage of your choice. Um, I am loosely typed on Twitter. Like I mentioned, the Word doc I shared or the Google doc I shared with you as my contact info. So anytime you can get in or you wish to get in touch with me, please do so. So let's talk about flaky tests. Now, before we get to detecting and prioritizing and fixing and triaging, let's define what flaky test actually means. There's a lot of definitions out there. Uh, different tools have different definitions, different approaches to flaky tests. Here is the definition that uh, is very specific to our conversation because we believe that in Gradle Enterprise uh, does flaky test detection, and again, might be a little biased, better than most of the tools out there. Our definition of a flaky test is a test that reports both success and failure given the same execution environment. And I want to be very, very specific here. It has to be the same execution environment. Or to put it another way, in the same build. You see, with flaky tests, it's important to realize that flakiness can be caused by a multitude of factors. Uh, even running the same test in at two different times, maybe on two different days of the week, uh, maybe on a specific date, um, even uh, things like the state of the hardware the test is running on uh, can potentially introduce uh, flakiness. Uh, you might make assumptions about reachability to downstream services or upstream services when you're running your tests. So it's important um, that in our definition of the word flaky, we mean in the same execution environment or in other words, the same exact build, the same uh, branch, the same commit, the same run, the same uh, CI agent uh, where that test might be running. Or it might be your local host, doesn't matter, but the point still stands. So I have a quick question for many of you, if you're willing to uh, 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 help me out here. I'm going to share a poll here. Um, there are Two questions. Um, I think I, let me, is that how, I think I shared it. Let me know if you all are seeing the poll. Um, but what I'm hoping you will tell me is, is what are your, what do you do if you get an unexpected test failure? So let me explain what that means. Perhaps you run your test suite locally, you push your branch up to CI and CI reports of failed test. In other words, uh, you were not expecting the test to fail, but it failed. What do you normally do? Um, I see people are really responding. 
some of you, uh, the question is do nothing, run it again, disable the test and hopefully file an issue, uh, hopefully file an issue. So it doesn't fall through the cracks. Um, apply a test retry annotation, depending on what test runner you are using, or maybe using your build tool, using like Maven or Gradle's test retry capabilities, and I'll talk about that. And then finally, uh, fix the test. So I'll, I'll give it a minute or two. I know people are still thinking about it. All right, let's see how we did. I'm gonna end the poll here and uh, share the results so that everybody can see. Um, so it seems that running it again is uh, definitely the go-to for a lot of people, 70% of us, um, some of us, and I appreciate the candor here. Say, I'm assuming if you've seen it enough, you just disable the test or probably file an issue. Uh, some of you have used the test retry annotation capabilities. Uh, so that's, I'm glad to hear that. And I'll talk about that today. And then 14 of you being the very uh, brave individuals in this group, uh, go out and fix the test, which I think is awesome. Um, and then I asked this question, are you using a test retry mechanism? Uh, some of you, 7% with Maven said yes, a lot of you with Gradle, 54%, and a lot of you said no. Beautiful. So thank you for participating in that. I'll try and come back to some of those points as we go forward. Let's talk about the costs associated with um, flaky tests. Um, um, I got another comment from uh, individuals. I'll try and address that in, hopefully, uh, and if the question is specific to Android, which I'm not much of an Android developer, but if I can't answer your question, or if I've not answered your question by the end of today's session, I'll reach out, I'll send you my email address, and then we can have an offline conversation. I can pull in the Android uh, specialists from Gradle and help address your concerns. So let's talk about the costs of flaky tests. Right off the bat, uh, it leads to unnecessary build failures, which has a direct impact to your productivity. Uh, many of you, 70% of you said you run it again. Depending on the length of your build, you just double the time it takes for you to get any kind of verification on the change you just made. Right, that is direct monetary uh, impact on your organization because what should have taken you n number of minutes now will take you n times two potentially number of minutes that is a direct monetary cost but you also tend to get pulled out of flow you were not expecting the failure you were expecting a success now whatever it is that you are working on is something that you potentially have to drop to the side. 14% of you said you go out and fix the test, right? Which means you have shifted context away from whatever it is you were working on to whatever the cause of that flaky test was. That cost of context switching is very hard to quantify, but we all know how expensive that is. Running it again also has resource costs attached to it, especially if you're running on CI. Suddenly CI resources are more contentious. Um, the more flakiness you are seeing in your tests also means that the availability of your CI resources becomes less and less since everyone is re-triggering builds all the time. Um, so you see how a flaky test can hold you hostage, right? To your local or CI builds. And it seems a lot of us are suffering in rerun mode and we need to get out of this mode. Let's talk about how we can do that. Um, they can also be very time intensive to fix for development teams. Um, and over time, if ignored, can become a quite the chore for development teams to try and draw out of that technical debt that is accrued over several sprints, several months, potentially several years. But what's the least obvious is that it reduces the confidence in the tool chain. Um, it poisons your culture. Um, 
developers have a tendency to over time start ignoring build failures, um, commenting out tests, ignoring test failures. That, again, a very unquantifiable uh, side effect of flaky tests, but extremely expensive to you and your organization. It doesn't stop there though, right? Flaky tests, like I mentioned, also increase the lead times because you're rerunning bills on CI or CI is unavailable, uh, decreases the resource efficiency of your CI resources, which means that either you throw more money or more hardware and the problem. Um, and of course, increases the budget. You're going to be adding more manpower or resources to add more CI infrastructure. This is uh, Etienne. He is VP of Engineering at Gradle. Um, flaky tests and they don't always mean that you have a problem with the test. It could mean that there is a problem with the system under test or the SUT. Um, and this is something that we need to be cognizant about. It's potentially livable, forgivable, if you just have a flaky test. But if the code under test is itself flaky and a flaky test is masking that errant behavior, eventually that bug is going to surface potentially in the worst place possible to your customers, right? Flaky tests make it very, very hard for developers to separate signal from noise, right? Hiding real issues um, under uh, a seeming red check mark on your CI. So I can, I know many of you are here. We have 35 people in the room. Most of you at some point in time have felt the pain of flaky tests. I know I've spent a lot of time as a developer. Re flaky tests are maddening, not just because of all the costs that I just talked about, um, the context switching, the, the poisoning of cultures, but reproducing a flaky test is also in itself an arduous process. That's the reason why they're referred to as flaky. They might pass and then they might fail. Or the other way, they might fail. A rerun might cause them to pass. But how do you go about actually tackling the real issue behind the flakiness if you can't reproduce it? So let's, before we start talk about prioritizing flaky tests, we need to be able to detect them. So let's talk about detecting flaky tests. It seems some of you are familiar with some retry mechanisms. Uh, there's a bunch of options here. Um, I'm just going to focus on what build tools allow you to do. So uh, the code you're seeing on the screen uh, is for a Maven build. Now recall that our definition of a flaky test is that the test passes and fails in the same execution environment, right? So this is our defi definition. So, uh, oh, by the way, I got a Q&A question. Can you please share some information about the retry mechanism in Gradle? Oh, coming up. So this is using the fail-safe fail configuration. What we are saying here is that uh, in this build, if a test were to fail, run it a second time. That's what we are saying. That's what we are configuring the build for. So this is a retry mechanism in, create, uh, in Maven. Now, if you are a Gradle Enterprise customer, uh, I've got some fantastic news for you. Uh, if you are using the Gradle Enterprise uh, 2022 plus extension, um, we ship with the retry mechanism as part of that extension. So you don't have to pull in a third party uh, retry mechanism because the Gradle Enterprise extension already provides it for you. Um, one question we get a lot is what's supported out of the box? Uh, JUnit 4, JUnit 5, Spock, and TestNG are supported out of the box. Um, somebody asked this question. Can you share some information about the test retry mechanism in Gradle? Uh, Gradle, like I mentioned, if you're using Gradle Enterprise Extension, it's already there. You just have to configure it. If you are not 
on the latest and greatest, not latest and greatest, it came out a couple of months ago. Um, you can always pull in the test retry plugin for Gradle. Um, let me share this link with everyone since uh, one of you asked about it. I'll just share this in the group chat if that's okay. Um, what this configuration does, and it's a bit, what I love about the Gradle test retry plugin is that the, the flexibility it offers to you. So what in this configuration, what I'm saying is if a test were to fail, uh, please rerun it twice. So the max number of retries per test is two. The nice thing here is we give you a shortcut. Uh, think of a shortcut mechanism to bail out of a, a, a build if the number of test failures exceeds 20, right? Because at that point, we may have just lost confidence in whatever checks that build is doing. So we might just bail out early and then fix the problem and try again. So I love the fact that we can do this in the Gradle test retry plugin. And then the final flag, which is fail on passed after retry, it's a quite a mouthful. And let me explain that very quickly. What that is saying is, let's say a test failed and then passed on the second attempt. What should Gradle do? Should it mark the build as success or a failure? What I'm saying here is, um, you should mark the build as a success as long as the test passes on the second attempt, right? The default here is false. So definitely look up the documentation to make sure you get the behavior you are looking for. But this is the uh, support that Gradle uh, gives you out of the box for your build. And same for Maven. Now that's not to say you can't use other retry mechanisms. JUnit has a retrying test annotation, I think, that can retry only specific tests, whereas this applies to the whole build. Regardless, um, oops, regardless, uh, this is the line that uh, the, the creator of Gradle once said and kind of stuck with me. Uh, retrying is great for flaky test detection, but it is a terrible remedy in the long run, right? Yes, today a test might fail and then pass on a retry, if you accrue these over time, um, that technical debt becomes very arduous to uh, pay back. So while the retry mechanism that I just talked about will help you in detecting flaky tests, and I'll talk about that in a minute, we need to figure out a way to really prioritize and fix, fix those flaky tests once and for all. So, most of these retry mechanisms, if you try JUnit's retry, even Gradle's retry, Maven's retry, they will tell you that a test had to be run n number of times before it passed. But reporting on that has always been uh, non-trivial. Gradle Enterprise can collate rerun tests. I'll show you an example in a second. It can collate reruns of tests and make it much easier to report on. And if you can report on it, you can shine a spotlight, right? You can quantify the problem. You can potentially even uh, assess which tests are the flakiest of them all and start uh, fixing them so you get maximum return on investment. Uh, it doesn't have to be the flakiest one. Maybe it's the one that is most disruptive to your developers. Maybe it's the one that tends to use up a lot of CI resources. Uh, maybe it's one that tests a very critical piece of your application that uh, you absolutely need to know success or failure. Regardless, reporting is that, that vehicle we can use. So let's look at this problem from two sides, from the developer's perspective and potentially someone who's just interested in the overall health of a build perspective. I am a developer. You are most likely a developer. Uh, let's say that you came across 
a bill. Now, just to highlight, uh, this is, uh, if you look at the URL, it's g.jetbrains.com. This is a Gradle Enterprise instance that is publicly available where the Intelli uh, great, uh, JetBrains team publishes the bill scans for all of their products. This is Kotlin, IntelliJ, and a bunch of other things that they build in-house. So it's a great playground if you just want to sandbox, if you just want to poke around and see how big teams are using Gradle Enterprise. Um, let's say I'm a developer and I accidentally, I, 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 I got a success locally. I pushed it up upstream. CI picked up my branch, built it and reported a failure. Right off the bat, I need to be able to discern, is this me that somehow broke this test? Nine out of 10 times, if you have any experience with flaky tests, you look at the test failure and you know this is not something you touched. This is not a problem that you may have caused. How can you ascertain if this was you or it just happens to be a flaky test? What I love about Gradle Enterprise is that it gives you a link to view the test history. And that will pop you over to the tests dashboard. Uh, Gradle Enterprise very nicely zooms in on that particular class and the particular method that just reported a failure. And immediately, in this case, you can see, well, this test was failed 14 times in the last seven days. It failed 14 times. It was reported as flaky 66 times, passed uh, about 1,300 times, and then was never skipped. And so now you have a sense, maybe this is just flaky behavior rearing its ugly head. It avoids you from going down that rabbit hole of saying, okay, maybe I broke it. Maybe I go need to debug this. Maybe I need to go fix it. And some of you, 14% of you said you actually go and fix the test, which again, we can help you with because the bell scan will report the error, we can show similar trend lines for that particular method, for that particular class. You can start to at least try and discern what could be the problem. Now, maybe you're coming in from the other side. You're somebody who's intimately interested in the health of your builds. Maybe you're just a developer interested in builds and tooling. Maybe you work for a centralized CI team, uh, maybe developer experience, developer productivity engineering, and your job is to make sure that teams are, uh, that the bills that teams are using are healthy and stay healthy over time. Um, I, let me just quickly uh, zoom out to all of the bill scans. Uh, if you notice, again, sort of looking over here, you can see that the, the uh, JetBrains team publishes a bunch of bills uh, to the Gradle Enterprise instance. So naturally, when you are trying to look for the health of a build, you can go to the test dashboard. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to work my way from the top down to help you figure out how to use this dashboard to be very effective and uh, show you some of the the, the hidden features, if you will. Of course, you have the full search capabilities of Gradle Enterprise available to you. So I can decide, let's just look at the health of the Kotlin project. And so I can search only for that particular project. Uh, now, now, what we are seeing here is the trend lines on how many builds uh, failed due to tests and how many bills reported uh, flaky tests. Now, of course, if your objective is, I want to ascertain the health of bills, you might want to um, zoom down even further. Um, this is reporting across all of the bill scans for the Kotlin project. It includes developer bills, CI bills, and all branches. So again, we can use the facilities offered to us by CI. I can search for the CI tag. And by the way, this is a plugin that we offer for both Maven and Gradle, which allows you 
to sprinkle on some of this metadata just by pulling in the plugin. And if you're interested, I can share the name of the plugin. It's a Gradle Enterprise custom extension, custom extension. Yeah. And I can share the link with you if you want. So now I'm zooming in only on CI builds and maybe I want to look at only integration branches. If you look at any of the build scans, um, let me just go to build scans and I go to any one of these and I look at the custom values, uh, the JetBrains team actually publishes a custom value called Git branch master. So um, here I can now search for Git branch equal master. And now I have a dashboard that gives me great insight into the health of the builds that are running the integration branches. What I do want to highlight, and this is somewhat hidden, is that uh, we change the URL every time you add a new filter. So if I want to share this with you, um, you can bookmark that link. Uh, so you don't have to keep remembering what criteria was used to reach this dashboard. You can just bookmark it, click it every so often, and then voila, you have the whole dashboard. Now this dashboard by default sorts by failed in decreasing order. You can see it down here. You can always sort it by flakiness. And now you can see that there's a bunch of tests uh, where you can see that some classes have more of an impact on the flakiness than others do, right? So let's drill down into one of these. Once again, what you will notice is at the very top, we have zoomed in on that particular class and we are showing you the trend lines for all the methods in that class. Um, you can find methods for that class or, or you can just, again, sort by flakiness and click on the topmost one. Now there's even more filtering you can do. You, it's a little hidden, but you can actually click any of these labels to hide away information that you don't want to see. For example, I don't want to see any of the past results. I only want to see flaky and failed. Similarly, on the right-hand side, we report the mean execution times for all your tests for that class or for that method. Once again, you can turn off and say, uh, I just want to smooth this curve out a little bit so I can tell what the execution time was. And then finally, this is uh, yet another um, hidden, uh, by the way, this only shows you, I think 50 or so. So you may not be seeing all of them. But one thing I want to highlight is you can click on all outcomes and you can see all of the bill scans that ran this particular test method right next to the ones that were reported as flaky or failed. And perhaps just looking over this might show you uh, some uh, or give you some glimmer as to what the problem might be. So you can see that there is um, a lot of facilities built into this dashboard. All of the power of Gradle Enterprises search is available to you. It is bookmarkable. Um, you can filter out information that you don't want to see in terms of past tests or skip tests. You can, you can smooth out the time curve by just saying, I just want to see the mean time. I don't want to see the median time or vice versa. Uh, and I know this is a little hidden for what it's worth. Uh, I didn't know about this till a couple of months ago that you could <laughs> just, so I'm making a big deal out of it, I know. I got a couple of questions in the Q&A and one question in the group chat. Uh, thank you for this insightful inf uh, session. Uh, we are a team of 10 members and as far as I'm aware, we cannot use Gradle Enterprise. Um, is it possible uh, to use this dashboard in the open source version? I don't. I, I believe when, when the question is open source version, they are talking about Gradle, the open source tool. The answer is you don't have this reporting facility, right, from Gradle itself. Um, this is all uh, added on value proposition 
migratory enterprise. Um, if I got your question correct, if I did not, please clarify the question and I'll, I'll address it. I got another one. Um, I think Zoom sends exports the recording or so. Yes, yeah, so somebody asked the question, thank you. Uh, is there a recording for this session? Thank you, Sebastian, for responding. Yes, you will get a Zoom uh, recording link in like 24 hours. I did get another question about uh, daemon shutting down and uh, group chat. So I'm going to go ahead and leave that question to the side for now because it's not topic on hand. Um, will all build test data be pushed onto cloud for Gradle to show the history? Yes. So if you are running, if you are using the Gradle Enterprise extension, you will configure or you should be configuring your builds to publish what is referred to as a build scan to Gradle Enterprise on every build. My mantra for that is every build, any build, success or failure, all the time, every time, local or CI. Um, and you can turn that on. It's a simple flag configuration in your settings.gradle or your uh, Maven extensions file. Simply says, always publish, and you will always get a build scan, which is the benefit where now you have past tests and flaky tests right next to each other, right? You don't want to be picking and sorting what, what builds are publishing build scans. Some great questions here. Uh, somebody said, Flaky test description requires enabling test retry on failure if you haven't considering do so. Yes, yes. And with Gradle Enterprise, you can detect the trends in flakiness. Um, is this a paid option? So retry mechanism in Gradle or Maven are not paid for options. They are built into the build tool. The reporting I'm showing you from Gradle Enterprise is part of the Gradle Enterprise appliance and that is a paid uh, uh, subscription. Uh, um, so in doing so, would this increase CI CD cost due to retries? So Sebastian asked a question. Um, so it would increase it, but it also helps you detect retry uh, flaky tests, right? So yes, there is a cost to the retry, but there's also the benefit of being able to detect flaky tests easily. Um, so yes, Sebastian brings up a great point. The fact that you are retrying tests increases the amount of resources you are using for CI. Absolutely agree. But I think return on investment in being able to report on flaky tests outweighs the costs of CI. And once you fix the flaky tests, those costs will again reduce over time, right? Um, Tom said, test analytics is an optional add-on to the base G licensing. Uh, we had to purchase it after the fact. Yes, I, and again, I'm not too involved on in the sales sides of things, but I think what Tom, and thank you, Tom, being very kind for bringing that up. I believe it's an add-on to the base subscription, I think. And I think Tom is correct. Some wonderful questions. Hopefully this gives you a sense of what Gradle Enterprise can do for you in terms of detecting and prioritizing flaky tests. I showed you how the dashboard, if you go back to all the tests, you can just sort by flakiness. And now you know which are the flakiest of your flaky tests. Now that you have that information, right? Let's talk about, um, so I, I covered, I think most of this helps identify when a test started displaying flaky behavior, uh, when it subsided potentially, um, tells you how long it has been happening. Um, I mentioned the fact that you can, oh, I did forget to mention one thing. Um, over here, let's just zoom in over here. This doesn't have to be a class. You can actually uh, put wildcard operators. And so now I am looking at all the tests in that. So you might have a performance folder or an end-to-end -end test package you can just simply look and see how different tests in that same sort of suite are behaving over time, right? And then one thing I wanted to mention, I should have mentioned, is another hidden nuance feature is if you hover over these question marks, we give you a ton of way to sort and filter the data, sorry, filter the data. Uh, we also support operators like 
the not operator. You can see right at the bottom there, the not operator. So maybe you want to say, I want to search for all bill scans that don't have this commit or are not on this branch. You can do that, right? So lots of hidden little uh, features of the Gradle Enterprise dashboard. So now that you can prioritize your reporting and you can prioritize, let's talk about fixing fakey tests. There's a bunch of different reasons why tests are flaky. Um, asynchronous behavior, I've spent a lot of time in the JavaScript space, but even the Java world is not immune to this. Um, deadlocks, um, assuming order of operations, especially if it's asynchronous, can lead to flaky behavior. Uh, improper time handling, this is actually a surprising thing to many Java developers. System dot current time millis is non-monotonic. In other words, depending on where you're running the test, you might actually flip back in time. So it's a non-deterministic operation. Um, and there are workarounds it. Um, some people will tell you to use system.nanotime, which is computationally more intensive, but um, is more accurate. There is an abstraction, uh, java.time.clock, which is an abstraction on top of the clock. So if your tests require timing, uh, definitely look into that. Um, lack of isolation is a big one. Uh, many tests do end-to-end -end testing or integration testing with other resources like databases. Um, sometimes, you know, you might set up a database in the before all method and tear it down in the after all, but then it's not, unusual for tests to assume some other test has run, which put that database in a specific state. Um, and so what happens here is if you are running them in some order and everything just works fine, if you now decide to put them on parallel threads, tests start to fail because there was an assumption of ordering, right? So uh, lack of... Uh, Lack of isolation between tests is another reason for flakiness. Uh, resource links. Maybe you are grabbing onto file handles and not cleaning up well after yourself. Um, here, maybe some in-memory file system. One recommendation I always give teams is that people tend to ignore try, uh, try catch blocks in the setup methods. So before all, before each, after all, after each. You should have good try, catch, finally blocks there, because if those fail on you, you're not actually setting up correctly, you're not cleaning up correctly, right? And that's a recipe for flaky tests. Um, and then the kitchen sink here is unreliable infrastructure, which could mean anything from the CI agent uh, that I'm running on suddenly had a network connectivity loss, maybe one of the upstream dependencies that I am testing against was not available at the time when my tests ran. Um, could be uh, network timeouts. Um, even browser-based tests are extremely uh, notoriously flaky because of infrastructure issues. Um, one solution there is maybe run those kinds of tests separately in a separate build so they don't and to paint the results of the full build. Um, and this is just talking about tests themselves. We, we haven't talked about maybe the system under test is itself flaky. Uh, what about bugs in the testing framework itself? Um, what about the hardware? Like I mentioned, clocks can be hard to work with. Um, Lots of, so, so unreliable infrastructure is a very kitchen sinky way of saying could be anything but these four, right? And I'm sure many of you can drum up a dozen different things you have seen over your careers. Um, so Sebastian asked a question. Uh, that's what I was interested in asking. We have trends for failed tests, but the flaky test trend detector is something we might need to ask our company to pay for. Yes, I hope you've seen some of the benefits, Sebastian. Uh, and then they said, uh, any best practices for Java testing you can think of with tip tips like date time examples you're giving now? 
I don't have, we have some resources that I've linked to in the document I shared with you. I'll, I'll send you one more. But a lot of this just comes out of experience, right? The, the nightmares that we have all endured. Um, and I don't think I've found a good collection of resources that cover some of these topics. Um, so now that you are reporting and you can find a way to prioritize, what do you focus on? Well, of course, the flakiest of flaky tests seems like an obvious candidate. But um, one thing that you might want to look at is saying, hey, this test suddenly started reporting flakiness, right? It wasn't flaky and suddenly started reporting flakiness. Maybe just squash it right there and then. Try and find a, a, a pair programmer who is willing to work with you, maybe track down the engineer who knows that part of the system very well and say, so let's just squash this right here and now. And that way you're not accruing technical debt uh, because it's fresh in your mind. Um, surface area that the test is affecting, um, especially um, if what it's testing is a critical piece of the application, you do not want a flaky test around that because you want to ensure the quality gate checks are in place so that a successful build tells you you're good to go, right? especially mission critical parts of the application. Um, the frequency at which a test is executed, maybe a unit test tends to be flaky and developers tend to run unit tests on their machine more often than say integration tests. So if, if, a, if there's a flaky unit test, it's more disruptive to engineers than perhaps, again, just in terms of prioritizing. And then uh, listen to your engineers. Uh, be careful. There are some engineers like myself who tend to be very vocal about things. Uh, so use the test dashboard, uh, the, the, the flakiest of flakiest of them all analysis with the voices of your engineers and say, all right, okay, we have one test that's really flaky, but the engineers are really getting affected by this test. Let's fix that one first. Right? Oh, somebody asked, can I share the doc again? Sure. I think that was Deepak. Let me do this. There you go, Deepak. Um, now, I don't have any real solutions. I have strategies to work with flaky tests and manage them and over time uh, fix them so they are not disruptive. One thing that you can do is try and quarantine flaky tests. Um, there are a bunch of techniques. Um, this blog post is from the Gradle Enterprise team on how they work with uh, quarantining flaky tests away from the main build. That's not to say that you quarantine them and you forget they exist. It's just a way so that you can have successful builds while you go about fixing those flaky tests. Um, one highly recommended technique is to schedule flaky test dates. Uh, this could be uh, between releases, maybe the end of a sprint, you pick a day. Uh, and what this does is you get your team focused on one problem, right? Maybe between your team, you divvy up the three of, of the most flakiest tests. You can focus on it. And what you get are cascading productivity gains from an exercise like this, uh, wherein uh, you invest the time in every sprint so that future cycles, you're not getting bogged down by uh, accruing technical debt. Uh, one of our engineers reached out to me and said that they uh, have a two hour slot every two weeks just to look at the tests, uh, identify the ones that are new and fix them or create issues. So they, they have a dedicated two-hour window every uh, week just to make sure that they're staying on top of this problem, right? And uh, if you have any suggestions here, feel free to throw them out. I'm sure others in the group could learn from each other. Uh, but this is something that I feel helps. And then uh, we had uh, a, a team member from Google who was at one of our conferences, DPE Summit last November, and she suggested building information radiators and sending emails to teams um, every two weeks, telling them about flakiness concerns and 
encouraging them to fix it, right? So information radiators, um, alerting around flaky tests is a brilliant idea. Deepak asked a question, what can be done if we run a test case locally? It's working fine, but in the pipelines it's behaving flaky. Um, that's a tricky one, Deepak, and that again goes back to uh, reproducing a flaky test is very hard. The bill scans that Gradle Enterprise will capture can be of some help. Um, looking at both failures and success on that CI machine, uh, once again, uh, Deepak, this might help you, but you can actually search for a particular host as well using Gradle Enterprise. So if you think it's a particular CI agent that is acting up, or maybe it's uh, uh, you can actually zoom in to say, show me only uh, all the test uh, tests that ran for the Kotlin project on the master branch in CI on this post, right? And then seeing success and failure outcomes might reveal some insight into what's causing the flakiness. Um, and like I said, very, very hard to triage this unless you are knee deep into it. So closing thoughts, you know, like I mentioned, test retry is great. I hope that most of you will look into it if you haven't used it already, but it's not a remedy. Um, we, you can use it to detect flaky tests, but you need another mechanism to be able to report on it, prioritize on it, and develop strategies for working with flaky test management. Um, Gradle Enterprise, you know, collects all your build scans, all your test histories, not just CI, but also local. It gives you powerful tools to analyze um, how many flaky tests you have, when they became flaky, if that behavior is improving or deproving over time. Um, you can use build scans, like I just told uh, Deepak, to drill down into a particular failure, uh, maybe see similar failures, um, and maybe discern a pattern that can help you um, uh, fix that test. Um, so the resources, again, are linked in this. And let me just share this one. Um, uh, what did I promise last year? I think it was Blakey test days. Yes, so this resource, I'll put it in the document as well. I'll paste it here. Um, let me just add it here. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, scheduling flaky tests and hopefully finding a, a, a workaround solving them. So I appreciate all the questions, Sebastian, Tom, stepping in. You know, I got a bunch of questions in the Q&A. I appreciate the time and patience. Your question wasn't answered. You know how to get in touch with me. You can also email us at training at gradle.com. We have a community Slack if you want to join that and reach out to other people using Gradle Enterprise or reach out to other uh, folks in Gradle who can try and help you out with problems. You will get a form to fill out some feedback. Uh, please take just two minutes to fill it out. Um, this is a brand new session that we are doing for all of you. Um, so if we can improve it in any way, let us know. Spread the word, tell your colleagues, tell your friends. If they're interested, we'll be doing one of these every couple of weeks. Thanks for coming in. I'm always appreciative of your time and attention. Um, wonderful crowd. Thanks for all the questions. And drop off. I know I said 40 minutes and I'm way over time, but all the questions were brilliant. So I appreciate you all. Thanks for coming in. Deepak asked, is it, uh, oh, well, thank you all. You're so kind. Thank you. Deepak asked a question, is it possible like the couple of test cases that are running together, which are making a case flaky? Um, so you potentially can, right, Deepak? Like I mentioned here, you could, uh, oops, here, uh, you can potentially look for a particular, like if you notice this one is called black box test, right? So if I look at only the black box tests, what you can identify is tests in the same package or similar kind of tests, like performance tests, you might have a package. 
end-to-end tests, you might have a package. And by zoning in only on all of those, what you are seeing here is a trend pattern for that entire package. And so it might help you uh, potentially reveal some patterns around flakiness. Uh, does it help you actually debug it? Not really, um, because that is domain specific, but it can help you discern patterns. Um, sure, you're all very kind. Thank you for coming in and enjoy whatever's left of your day or evening. <laughs>